This week, the HPT invades the biggest little city in the world. We're in Reno, Nevada at the Peppermill Resort Casino and Spa for the HPT's last call of season seven. Nestled in the Sierra Nevada mountains lives one of the greatest poker rooms in the nation and rounders from all across the country gathered this week to test their skills against a talented and competitive field battling for HPT immortality. Now we are down to our final six. This table features two past HPT champions, including the HPT 2008 Player of the Year, two more professional players, and an unlikely amateur who's on the heater of a lifetime. The stage is set. HPT history, the championship, and thousands of dollars are on the line. Hi there, I'm uh, Daniel Hojos. My name is Joseph Christman. Hi, my name is Eric Stokes. I'm from West Bloomfield, Michigan. Uh, my name is Lloyd Marshall. I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. Mark Poker Hokroon. I'm the chip leader with 954,000 chips. I'm ready to take this down. I'm Mary Jo Belcor Zagman, and I have 222,000 in chips, but good things come in small packages. Just from watching other players, I kind of have an idea of how it's going to go down. Mary is very likely to to wait for a good hand. Lloyd, he's kind of interesting one because he's tight, but he also calls with hands that most people will not call with. You know, winning the second championship would be just as important as the first one, you know, solidifying that it wasn't just a one-hit wonder. I think I'll just try and stay away from the good players and get all the chips I can from the inexperienced ones. Everything is table dependent. Hopefully my table draw will get the, uh, the good players to my right and the bad players to my left. Well, I'm gonna take my time and look a little bit to see who's attacking who first and just wait for the right spot to do what I need to do. Double up a couple times and it'll be history. They come from all walks of life, each with a story to tell. All they need is a chip and a chair. It's an open casting call for those who love the game. This ain't your weekend home game. This is the HPT. Sit right down, put on your poker face, you with the big dogs now. Better bring your best game dog. Trash all you want, to me it's all the same. You won't leave with much when you come in second place. And I'm the one with the stack showing seven to the jack on crying your mama cause I'm sending you back. I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand. I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand. Last man standing with the money in my hand. I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand. Hello and welcome once again to the HPT. We are in Reno, Nevada at Peppermill Casino Resort Spa for the HPT Season 7 Last Call. I'm Chris Hansen and the man to my left has never missed a last call. He is Fred Bevel and you know Last Call Fred is always bittersweet. It means that, you know what, you don't have to go home but you can't stay here. This is the last one for Season 7. It is the last one for Season 7. After we crown a champion here at the Reno Peppermill, we're going to go ahead and pack up the circuit is tense it is the HPT kennel the animals and take a much needed break but hey season eight is just around the corner and as always it's shaping up to be bigger than the previous year Freddie no one wants to miss a last call and that was evident this week in our field when we got down to our final six we saw that this wasn't just any other HPT final table two past champions have played through this competitive field and one of them is our 2008 player of the year Mary Jo Belcor Zogman Mary Jo is making her third final Final table tonight, along with past HPT champion and former NFL player Eric Stokes, who is sitting down at his second final table tonight. Well, Fred, they've definitely got their work cut out for him. We have three other pros at the table, plus an amateur who's looking to take this all the way to the bank. Let's meet these talented players and then get right to the action. In seat number one, this is Mark Kroon from Madison, Wisconsin. He's a bar owner and a professional poker player. Learned the game of poker many, many, many years ago from his good friend, Mr. Phil Helmuth. I've heard that name before. Yeah, he's kind of famous. In seat number two, Daniel Holhosh is from Incline Village, Nevada. He's a soccer coach and referee. He's been playing the game of poker for seven years. But Fred, this is his first major tournament, primarily a cash game player. Well, Daniel isn't the only athlete at this final table. Eric Stokes in the 
the three seat spent a good part of his adult life blocking for someone named Barry Sanders in the Detroit Lions. Eric is a retired NFL player and a pro trainer. He is sitting at his second final table with 628000 In seat number four, this is Joe Chrisman. He is a pro poker player as well from Pacifica, California. And congratulations are in order. A three-month-old daughter at home, Avalon. Congratulations to Joe and his wife for their first child. Salute this man. He is one of America's heroes. Lloyd Marshall is in the five seat. He is a disabled American veteran, and he refers to his wife as his lucky charm. The man has only been playing poker for five months. We'll chalk him up as a quick learner. And finally, in seat six, she is a past HPT Player of the Year. She is Mary Jo Belcor Zogman from the Chicagoland area. Mary's got 220,000 chips as she sits down looking for her second HPT title. Mark starts this final table as the chip leader with 31% of the chips in play. But Chris, you look at this board. They're all very, very tight. Mary Jo right now is the short stack with 220,000 in chips. All right, let's get started here at the Pepper Mill. Blinds are 10 and 20,000 with a 2K ante as we continue here at our final table. Lloyd's going to be first. Ace three offsuits for the veteran. You're playing well, Lloyd. And he folds. I believe he's the first native Hawaiian to ever make one of our final tables. Great to see another state represented at the HPT felt. This is Mark Kroon from Madison, Wisconsin. He is going to raise it up with Jack four from the cutoff. Over to the button here. This is Daniel with 8 6. He will fold Everything over to solid, Eric. Sir. And we're over to Eric in the three seat. Eric played in the NFL for the Detroit Lions, the Buffalo Bills, spent some time with the Philadelphia Eagles. He is also a shining example of what you can accomplish if you follow the Fred Bevel workout regimen. <laughs> <laughs> this guy lifts weights bigger than you, Fred. <laughs> I don't know if you're teaching him anything. Eric is in the tank, and now he's going to fold. <clears throat> over to Joe Chris. I had the advantage. And now we're over to Joe in the four. You don't have your double shot yet. You're, you're the best player in the hand right now. <laughs> <laughs> Joe peels back Jack shot. Queen. I look at him. No, they're still there. Joe, one of the yeah, shorter yeah. stacks here at our final table, taking on the big stack. All in. And Joe puts all the chips in the all middle. Re raise by Joe. What'd you all start in. with? All in re raise. As the decision is now going to be back on Mark, our big stack at this final table. Sorry, up to 400 now. And Mark folds. Mark is going to fold, try to make a raise from the cutoff. And Joe said, no, nah, not on my big blind, sir. Thank you very much. Don't mind that play by Joe. Joe's going to draw first blood at this final table. Blind still at 10 and 20,000 with a 2K ante as we continue here at our final table. Reno, Nevada at Pepper Mill. Beautiful poker room here. Man, I tell you, uh, we travel all over the country. This is as good as they get as far as Joe poker rooms get here at Pepper Mill. No doubt about it. State of the art. Hasn't even been open a year yet. Still has that We're new poker room smell to it. Uh, uh, but they still give out bad beats in those new rooms. You think they'd let them get mature <laughs> before they start giving out bad beats? Mark limps in with King-10 on the button. Daniel in the small blind. Deciding whether he wants to see a flop or if he wants to raise. Daniel learned the game of poker by playing in low stakes limit cash games. Daniel makes the call. He's going to go ahead and call here with Jack here. two. Eric Stokes going to so check his players, option with queen play. four. Three players going to the flop. Go ahead and see that flop, please. And here we go. The first flop of the night is queen three nine rainbow and Daniel's first act. Daniel's sitting on jack high. Eric has flopped the best of this. His hit top pair with the queens. Mark has a gut shot straight draw. Needs a jack to fill that in. Daniel Daniel's checks. first. He's going to check. Over to, Eric. Over to Eric, who has the best hand right now. 40, Out comes 40,000. 40, Eric's not going to let that queen go by without making Daniel him pay for a turn. The call. Mark's going to call with his gutter. Expect Daniel to get out of the Daniel, way here. And he does. And so now we're heads up Two players. with Eric and Mark. And Eric will be first act after the turn. Eric checking dark before the turn. He's acting yeah, acting before the turn. Here we go. Let's see what it is. The turn is an eight. And so now Mark is going to be on the decision. Eric still has the best hand with top pair. Mark still needs that jack or a king on the river to pull ahead. 
Mark getting exactly what he wanted, which was that free river. And the river is a jack, and that gives Mark the straight. Eric checks again. And Mark is going to value bet here at 82000 Now the question is, will that amount or even more come off of Eric Stokes' stack? Eric's got to make the call here. The price is just too good to not see a showdown with top pair. Unfortunately, Chris, I think that check on the turn cost him the pot. Should have made him pay for it. And sure enough, Mark shows him his straight. and Maybe Eric might have thought that he was going to get out kicked on that hand. Turns out and gave him that free river and made the hand for our chip leader. More poker when we come back to the Pepper Mill next on the HPT. Welcome back to Reno, Nevada. Our stop this week on the HPT at the Peppermill Casino Resort. Let's take a look at our current chip count. Well, Mark is picking up right where he left off. He started this table as the chip leader. He is widening that gap now with 35% of the chips in play. Mary Jo Belcour Zogman still the short stack with only 6%. The button has moved. It's on seat number two. That's Daniel. Minor first start act will be Lloyd in the fight. Lloyd's going to be first act. Ace Jack is the holding for Lloyd under the gun here. Lloyd said he is playing today for his family. That's nice. <laughs> I'd be playing for the money. I didn't know, <laughs> didn't know his family was up for grabs here. <laughs> Lloyd raises to 45000 Mary Jo folds over to chip leader Mark Kroon. Mark peels back wired sevens. This is interesting here. A lot of players would just call this and set mine, and that's what Mark's going to do. Some players would go ahead and raise here and put the original razor to the test. Get more chips in that pot whenever you can. And looks like on the button, 3-5 of spades for Daniel. Oh, we got a raise and a call. Maybe not a bad hand to see a flop with on the button, but Daniel he will fold. 10-5 for Eric and the small folds. blind goes to the muck. And yeah, now to Joe. Joe with deuce three. Not a big hand, but he's already invested in this pot from the big blind. And he Joe decides holds. to fold, and so it will be heads up with a horse race between two Mark and Lloyd. So we have two players. Two players. The two best. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at the flop. The flop is 10, ace, three, and ace, jack right, is out, flop, pocket seven. Lloyd, Lloyd pulls way ahead in this hand, flopping the ace, and he is going to bet it. Really, Lloyd? 45,000 is the bet. 45,000, Fred. The bet is 45 from the seat five. We go back over to Mark. Thank you. The two overcards on this flop don't seem to be scaring Mark at all. Well, you make the call here. You're now getting 5-1 to one on your money to see the turn. If you can catch lightning in a bottle, you're probably going to get all the chips and on the Mark's turn. <laughs> but he decides not to see that turn. <laughs> Mark takes more of a cautious road with Lloyd. Lloyd's been playing pretty tight so far. Don't want to give him too many chips. Mark Kroon offering to buy drinks for the table. That's the kind of nice guy he is. Feels dollars. good to be the chip leader. <laughs> Order <laughs> drinks, throwing money around. <laughs> it's going to make it 52000 to go with Over king Daniel seven offsuits. Nine, ten of hearts for Daniel. Suited connectors in a shorthanded game is tempting. Nine, seven. Daniel more of a cash game player. This is his first major Daniel tournament. Daniel Seems to me a cash game seat. player would love to see a flop here with nine, ten of hearts. Especially against the chip leader, a guy who can double you up. But then again, I'm just a poker commentator. What do I know? Daniel, not sure what he wants to do here with his suited connectors. He knows he's going to be playing an aggressive player post-flop. He's going to fold. Over to Eric in seat number Over three. Over to Eric in seat three, he will fold. Eric folds. We're now on to Joe. Joe from We're Pacifica, Joe. California. Joe looks down at 10 jack of clubs in the cutoff. Seems to me the kind of hand a player might like to see a flop with. Can you tell, Fred, I'm addicted to flops and I cannot lie. Joe's wife, Megan, is an environmental engineer. Let's him play poker whenever he wants. Come on. It's a dream. 
He doesn't even have to beg or grovel or make empty nothing. promises or anything. Call. Nothing. He just says, honey, I'm playing poker. She We're says, good luck. Five. Wow, I say stuff like that. I just duck. <laughs> so Joe calls with his Jack-10 of clubs. And over to Mary Jo Belcour Zogman, past champion, 2008 Player of the Year. She's going to play. She's got king-queen suited. Mary Jo makes the call, Freddie. So Mary Jo calls out of the big blind. Three players going to see this flop. They don't like to wait. And here we go. The flop is eight, right. ace, six. Mary, Mary Jo's, Jo's first six. act. This is a swing and a miss for all the players here. Mark was the original razor pre-flop. He's going to take advantage of that and lead out here on the flop. 67,000 is the bet. Action on Joe Chrisman. These players hesitant to fold against Mark. Mark is an aggressive player with a wide range. Joe folds. Mary Jo is Joe going to fold, and Mark's going to win another hand at our final table. You know, Fred, we haven't seen much play out of Mary Jo today right in that short stack, but, you know, as long as Mary Jo is at the poker table, she is a force to be reckoned with. I'm Mary Jo Belcour Zagman, and I am now from Crystal Lake, Illinois. It's been too long since I've been here, and I needed to get back here, so I'm very excited to be here. And this will be my third final table. I am the first woman that was the Heartland Poker Tour Player of the Year, and that I achieved in 2008, so my reigning year was 2009. I think one of the funnest parts about playing in the Heartland Poker Tour is whether we walked in at Colorado or in Deadwood, it's like people say, hey, Mary Jo and Dan's here. It's like walking into a home, you know, casino, even though it's, you know, hundreds of thousands of miles away or whatever, you know, states away from home. We feel at home at any of the Heartland events. All right, Eric Stokes is going to be first act in this hand. He's got king, queen, offsuit. He's going to raise it up to 45,000 with my favorite hand. over to Joe in the floor. Joe Chrisman, wired threes. What to do, what to do. Under the gun razor, you wake up with a baby pair. All in. That's what you do, you get them all in the middle. Well, that's twice now that we have seen Joe just move all in against a raise from one of the bigger stacks. Mary Joe looks down at ace 10. So you had a raise and then an all in. What does the short stack feel like doing? She feels like folding. She didn't want to though. Well, pocket sevens for Mark. Mark can't make the call. In the two seat. Obviously, both Mark and Mary Jo giving Eric and Joe Daniel a lot Foles. of credit here for premium hands. Yeah, we go back to Eric. And now Eric looking at just under 300000 to call. Eric he Foles is going to say, no, King thank you. Green. And Joe Chrisman showing that the all-in play is working well for him. Well, the all-in works again for Joe Chrisman. This short stack not willing to go down without a fight. Hi, my name is Eric Stokes. I'm from West Bloomfield, Michigan. Um, I'm a personal trainer. Uh, yes, I did play professional football. I played uh, for the Detroit Lions from 96 to 98. Had a couple more um, years playing with Buffalo Bills, Philadelphia Eagles, and I ended up my career in the, the XFL. So I've been in a lot of different cities, and transitioning actually from football to poker has been something that I can actually really enjoy. You know, winning the second championship would be just as important as the first one. You know, solidifying that it wasn't just a one-hit wonder, and coming all the way out, like I said, just um, meeting all the guys and having a good time. Fred, when people are looking for you and I to casino, it's either the craps table, the poker table, or the buffet. If you're looking for Eric Stokes, poker table, or the hotel gym. Yeah, he spends a lot of time <laughs> pumping iron, and good for him. When I met him, he was a 300-pound sloth dragging his knuckles. Now look at him. <laughs> you're welcome. Aren't you the 300-pound sloth dragging your knuckles? I'm the before picture for inspiration. <laughs> Got it. All right. Well, Mark has now moved himself over a million in chips as we continue. Still six-handed at this final table here at the Peppermill Eight, four, Casino four, Resort in Reno, Nevada. Actions folded around to the big stack. Mark. This is Mark Kroon. He will limp in. He's from Madison, Wisconsin. Claims he learned the game from Phil Helmuth. Mark is proud to say that Phil is one of his best friends in the world. Taught him the game many, many years ago. Phil, of course, originally from Madison, Wisconsin. Mark playing a lot of hands at this final table. Daniel this time it's call. King 10. Daniel's going to call with Queen 7. And Eric Stokes is all in. Eric's going to go all in. Eric's going to raise all in. 
We'll Eric not messing team. around here. King six, not a great holding, but you got a limper and then a caller Mark behind Fultz. him. Mark Folds. We'll Why not just we'll jack it up and take this pot down? Gets Mark out of the way. And that's really the only guy he was worried about. Right. <laughs> he shoots a quick smile to Daniel. Kind of lean on me. Pick up 60,000. Obviously, Eric is no stranger to high-level competitiveness, playing in the NFL for many years. Way better hand. You're not calling. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it. The very confident Eric Stokes says, you're not calling. Just throw your chips in the middle there, buddy. We've gotten to know Eric pretty well over the years on the HBT. He's played many events, has a good cash record, making his second final table tonight. Both he and Mary Jo trying to only be the second player to win more than one event on the HBT. Jeremy Dresch still stands as the man who's only won more than one HBT event, and he's won three of them in his career. Mary Jo Belcor Zogman wakes up with wired kings, and she is getting them in the middle. Her and her husband, Dan, very rarely miss an HPT event as we crisscross the country. They're known as the first couple of the HPT. <laughs> Dan also won an HPT event a couple of years back, and action has been folded around to Joe Chrisman. He's the last person with the option here to call the all-in for Mary Jo, and he's got ace jack of hearts. It might happen. It is going to happen. Joe, Joe makes the makes call. Mary the call. Jo is going to see she card. is ahead. Mary Jo shows pocket. But Joe has hearts and he's got a live card. Ace, that's right. uh, never fails. Yeah, pocket kings, you always get called by the ace something. Always get called by the ace something. All right, I don't want to jinx her. We all know okay, the kings so are the ace the magnet. Let's hope that she can hold up here. Pocket kings going up against... Ace Jack of Joe's. And there is a look at Mary Joe's husband, Dan Zogman. And here we go. Let's see if she can survive and double up. The flop is 6 10 queen. No king. Well, that's an interesting Mary flop for Joe, Joe Chrisman. Now, Mary Joe does not want to hit a set. No that would give Joe the Broadway straight. No king. No king. No king. No king. Steve, let's go ahead and see Joe's, the turn. Um, and the turn is a six, pairing the board, and so now Joe can't make the straight. He's down to an ace and only an ace. King, king, six, king, six. King. Mary Jo needs to fade one more street to double up. Oh! Oh, and on the river. Mary Jo Belcour Zogman's bid to win her second HPT final table has ended thanks to an ace on the river. All right, guys, I'm now joined with HPT Royalty, former player of the year. You've had so much success. That last hand, you're ahead uh, all the way until the river. the river. Yeah, there's a book out on that here, too. But uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You came to the table at 222, but you played great all weekend. And you're I going tried. home with a little bit of money, just yeah. over uh, eight grand. Yeah. I mean, uh, not a bad weekend. No, no, I'm a happy camper. It's OK. <laughs> Kings don't always hold up. And we always know we'll see you again on another HPT event. Oh, yeah. So thanks so much for playing. All right. Thank you, guys. Good luck to the rest of you. I would love to take a look <laughs> at the flight miles that those two have earned, her and her husband, on flying to HPT events. They have done a lot. And Fred driven to a lot of events, for that matter, as well. Boy, there's a reason they're the first couple of the HPT. They almost didn't make this trip because they're closing on a new house. I said, ah, hold on a minute. We're we can do to that Reno. tomorrow when we get home. <laughs> Let's worry about this poker tournament. Well, as always, Mark Croon right, is driving the action. He makes it 52,000 to go with 9-6. Do you like this style, or should the big stack uh, sit back and let the other people pound on each other for a while? I like this style. Keep driving the action. We're on Eric Stokes right now. Contemplating a call. He is going to fold his button. Eric folds. We're over to Joe. Action now to Joe Chrisman. He looks down at Ace Deuce of Diamonds. He folds. Joe oh, Foles, we're in seat. Yeah. Over to Lloyd Marshall, oh, wait, disabled American veteran, like served our control. country in Vietnam. <laughs> call. And Lloyd's gonna He's going to see a flop with call. ace five offsuit. We have two players. Two players. I'd like to see them, too. All right, two players. Steve, let's go ahead and see the flop, sir. And the flop is four, three, and five, yeah, all diamonds. Five you think Joe wishes he'd have kept his cards if in front of him? Joe would have seen a flop with ace, deuce of diamonds. He would have flopped the steel wheel. Instead, it's Lloyd right now with the best hand. He's got top pair and a gut shot straight draw. Mark has an open-ended draw. Lloyd is going to be first to act. 52. 
Looks like a well, it's going to cost Mark $52,000 to see a turn with his open-ended straight draw, and that was easy. Of course, every day of the week and twice on Thursday. <laughs> the Diamonds don't seem to be scaring either of these players here. Here comes the turn. It is a six, and now Mark pulls ahead. Mark pulls ahead now with top pair, but now both players have an open-ended straight draw, which would chop this pot. Deucer a seven on the river would end up in a chop, and looks like Lloyd is going to try it again. Here comes the second bullet. This time it's a hundred thousand. Okay, we move back over to Mark in the one. And that's going to make Mark think a little bit. Lloyd's a pretty tight player, opening his range a little bit. Four to a straight on the board, diamonds on the board. Mark's going to wait for a better spot. Lloyd is going to win this pot and flashes a little Hawaiian pride at our final table and more poker when we come back to the Peppermill Casino Resort next on the HPT. Thanks for coming back to the HPT with Fred Bevel. I'm Chris Hansen. It's time for our weekly Pro Tip of the Week with 2004 World Series of Poker main event champ Greg Raymer. Tonight, the Fossil Man talks about when it's time to show your bluff. Now, you've made a bet with what's obviously the best hand, and everyone is folded. Should you show your hand? Now again, I generally say don't show your cards if you don't have to because you're giving free information to your opponents and this will give them a stronger line on how you play and will let them play better against you in the future. So if you have good opponents, you should basically never show your cards to them. If you have less good opponents, less experienced opponents, maybe you should show a winning hand. The reason to do this is to let them know that, hey, you know, I've got a hand here. I don't mess around. The truth is, when you are playing poker, especially tournament poker, even when you think you might have the best hand, you usually want everyone to fold. So if you can get opponents to fold every time you bet, that's really not a bad thing. Sometimes you'll have the nuts and you'll wish they had called, but more often than not, you want them to fold. So when they do fold and you have a strong hand, it's okay to show it and reinforce that belief that you always have the nuts and they're better off just always laying it down. Thank you very much, Greg. You know, a wise man once told me, Fred, when someone wants to see your bluff, make it like a swimsuit on a good-looking gal. You always want to see more. Just <laughs> leave them hanging, man. Not bad, not bad. Mark Prune still the chip leader. He slid a little bit in chip size, but still has the lead. Action in this hand is going to start on Daniel. He's got queen eight suited. So first act will be Daniel in the two. Daniel, Daniel folds, folds over to Eric, Eric Stokes from West Bloomfield, Eric's gonna Michigan. 60,000. Going to make it 60,000 to go with Wire Daniel Jacks. Joe in the four. I've noticed that most of the oh, initial oh. raises at this final table have been to 45,000, which is really a small raise. Eric, Eric finally Eric making it a Lloyd. standard raise of three times the big Lloyd blind folds. up to 60K. Back to Mark and one. Joe and Lloyd fold over to Mark. The raise by Eric was to Mark's 60, never seen 000. two cards he didn't want to see a flop with. He's going to make the call with Ace oh. Eight of Hearts. Two players. And we're heads up with Eric and Mark. Let's go ahead and see that flop, Steve. And here we go. The flop is queen, ace, seven. Mark's Mark check. pulls way ahead on the flop. Point. Flop's pair of aces. Wagers Eric is going to lead out with his wire zero. jacks, makes it 120,000 to go. And Mark moves all in. All in. By Mark in the one. Initial bet, 120. Oh, jacks are the hardest oh. hand in poker to play. You got to raise with them when you get called and over cards hit the board. Especially when you're facing an all-in re-raise. He's the only guy at the table that can knock you out. And Eric and Stokes is going to lose a big pot here. And our chip leader continues to surge past this million chip mark. Mark wins. He is in control. No Check doubt about it. Mark is going to go ahead and flash that ace. That'll help Eric sleep later tonight. Yeah. Like two minutes ago. Mark also has another friend to watch him on the rail today with HPT experience. He is Gary Debo DiBernardi. He won an event here at Peppermill earlier this year on the HPT. Joe Chrisman this time with nine deuce. It's going to go to the muck. Lloyd quickly folds. And now over to Mark. He looks down at pocket kings. Now this is where that aggressive play is probably going to get him paid off by somebody here. That's one of the advantages to being an aggressive player. You make raises with marginal hands. You get called down. They see that you don't always have it. Then you make the big bet with a big hand. You get action like this. Daniel is all in. Action is now on Eric Stokes. 
You go to Eric in the three. And he's trying to decide what Mark is going to do. I think it is fairly Eric's obvious to everyone what Mark, Mark is going to do. He is going to make the call. Mark flips over. Pocket Kings. Well, Chris, deja vu, Ace kind of. Daniel. Earlier, we saw Mary Jo Belcourt Pocket Zogman's Kings, Kings get cracked by Ace Jack. This time, Mark, Mark is going to hope they hold up against Ace Four. Hey, 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 hey. Are in the lead. Daniel's fan club All right, Steve, trying to pull that Please ace out of this deck. This Here we go. Let's see the flop. The flop is eight five four. A little more help for Daniel. Daniel pairs his four, picking up a couple more outs. <laughs> the kings of Mark currently in the Mark lead on the rail, on hoping those kings can make it through the river. Steve-O, let's go ahead and see the turn card. Here comes the turn. It is There's another eight. Diamonds, King so far, so good for Mr. Croon. An ace or a four to stay alive on the river for Daniel. It is an ace. And the rest of the players at this final table are saying, don't show me kings. Please don't show me kings. They have not done very well at this final table tonight. Both pairs of wired kings fell on the river, and now it is Daniel doubling up huge at this final table. That's going to take a hunk out of Mark's stack. Well, that stopped the momentum for Mark, and uh, has definitely given a little more spring, I would guess, to the step of Daniel Holhos. On to the next hand. Lloyd is going to fold. And now we're back to Mark. Mark's going to fold. Mark's going to let the steam come out of his ears before he plays another hand, I think. And the excitement is definitely in the room here. A lot of action at this final table. It's mom and dad for Daniel on the button. He's just got some brand new chips fresh out of the oven. Let's see what he's going to do with them. Daniel announces. Daniel announces a raise. He's from Incline Village, Nevada. Been playing poker for seven years. Primarily plays cash games. He says this is his first major tournament. Eric Stokes waiting to see how much it's going to cost him to stay in this hand. Daniel has announced a raise, but hasn't given an amount. There he goes. It's 120000 to go. And now to Eric. Eric is going to go all in with Big Slick. Eric raises all in. Over to Joe in the four. And Joe's going to look down, hoping for one particular hand. Doesn't folds. see it. He folds. And a call Daniel makes the Daniel. call. And so now Daniel, with those chips he just took off of Mark, will put uh, some of them at King. risk and try to eliminate Eric Stokes. Or Eric. Eric is going into this flop a three-to-one favorite here. Daniel. Daniel only has a queen as a live card. Eric in the three seed chose Sorry, ace king. That was perfect. But... And here we go. The flop is deuce five ten ace king still out in front. Leading in the hand. Let's go ahead and see the turn card. And the turn is a king. And Daniel still down to a queen on the river to eliminate Eric Stokes. Let's go ahead and see the river card, please. And the river seven. is a seven, and so Eric Stokes is going to double up, and the former NFLer is not ready to head to the locker room just quite yet. More poker when we come back on the HPT from the Pepper Mill in Reno, Nevada. Welcome back to Reno, Nevada. This week's stop on the HPT at Pepper Mill Casino Resort with Fred Bevel. I'm Chris Hansen. Mark started this final table as the chip leader. Now that belongs to Daniel, but geez, Chris, look at this. They're less than 10,000 chips apart from each other. The short stack is Lloyd with only 17% of the chips in play. Back to the action where blinds are still 10 and 20,000 with a 2K Annie. All right, Eric's going to be first to act in our next hand with deuce four to the muck. Over to Joe. Eric folds. Mentioned that Joe's got a three-month-old baby at home. Says he's going to use the prize money today to start a college fund for his daughter. Over to Lloyd. Ah, you got plenty of time to save for that, don't you? Yeah, worry. she's only three months. Get a car. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd's going to call with 10 six of diamonds on the button. Over to Mark with six deuce. He will call in the small blind. And so now action is going to be on Daniel, our chip leader. Daniel peels back ace-queen. A lot of players would raise in this spot. Let's see what Daniel does. He's going to check his option. Chris, I'm a little surprised at that. That's not a huge trap, but it's big enough to get your foot caught in. That's for darn sure. All right, let's go ahead and see the Three players going to the flop. The pot's 110,000 in chips right now. Formality. 
And the flop is 9-7 right, King with a couple of spades. Mark's first act. None of these players flopped a pair, but Lloyd has a gut shot straight draw. Right now, Daniel's still ahead with ace high. Mark with six deuce doesn't stop him from betting. He fires 42,000. Kind of a bad situation to get into. You have kind of a plan of what's going to happen, and I bet you his plan didn't involve him having to call a 42,000 chip bet coming from Mark. But Daniel will fold. Move over to Lloyd in the five seat. I just call. And Lloyd is going to call with his gut shot straight draw. Lloyd just says, I don't believe you, Mark. Lloyd is ahead, though, with 10 high. Go ahead and see the turn card, please. And here comes the turn. And he makes a pair with his tens, and he pulls further ahead. Mark in the one. And let's see if Mark can fire a second bullet representing that king, or even maybe the scare card representing the flush. Well, there are three spades on the board. Mark is the only one of these two players to have a spade in his hand. 87,000. Mark is going to fire 87,000. <clears throat> and that is going to put the screws to Lloyd Marshall. And we go over to Lloyd. Oh five. Lloyd takes a look at his card, says, I got second pair. I've got a gut shot straight draw. Not letting three spades bother me, apparently. He does make the call. So just mirror Lloyd and Mark played a lot of hands together today at this final table. These two are very friendly, jabbering back and forth across the table together, all good spirited. Five, six, seven, just, just Eight, one. seven, yes, sir. Lord, I had a flush. Uh, I know. Just got missed. Lloyd? <laughs> Lloyd? She's just getting the uh, mark. <laughs> <laughs> trying to talk to Lloyd and Lloyd having card, none of it. <laughs> and here we go. The river is a jack. <laughs> Lloyd has the best of it unless Mark can push him off. Mark in the one. Mark's first act. That's a he is going to check. Lloyd in the five. And I don't see Lloyd betting here. He's going to go ahead and let his cards do the talking. Going to flip over his cards. And his cards and are going to scoop him a big pot, Chris. 368,000 in oh, chips. Or a pair of You're good. But, uh, his hand is good. Wow. Mark not all that happy about Lloyd calling him with 10 high on the flop. But for Mark Crone starting this final table as the chip leader, everything was going his way. Mark Poker Hole Croon, I'm ready to take this down. You know, when you, play, when you play as much poker as I do, you have to have a great wife. And I have the best wife in the world. Her name's Christy. She's a school teacher. And without her, none of this would be possible. Um, of course, every time I win, I have to give her the money. So she likes that. But she gets such, so much of the benefits because we get to go travel all over the world. And uh, she gets, she's like the perfect poker wife. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. It's the hotbed of poker. This is, I know everyone says, well, you got to say Phil Helmy is from Madison, Wisconsin. But we got a base we got so many great players from Madison, Wisconsin, and now it's me. I'm the final table guy. I, I met Phil 30 years ago. Uh, we started playing a little one-two game at, my, at this bar that I eventually bought. Uh, we became really good friends, and uh, once he won the World Series of Poker, I'm like, well, if he can do it, anybody can do it. Blinds at 20 and 40,000 with a 5K Annie as we get back to the action. Joe Chrisman ready to go. 6-5 offsuit. Over to Lloyd. Raise. Lloyd's got some chips. He's going to use them. He's raising it to 85,000. And again, small raises here, Fred. Blinds are 20 and 40. Lloyd makes it 85,000. It's kind of been the trend at this final table that everyone's been following. We're only going to go two to two and a half times, not bump it all the way up to three times the big blind. Mark is going to go ahead and call the raise with Jack Nine of Hearts, also known as the Chris Hansen. I can report to you that that hand lost another three figures this weekend uh, here at Pepper Mill. Doesn't stop you from playing it, though, does it? Here we go. The flop is 10-7 deuce with two diamonds. Well, just like what Jack Nine usually does, it flops some sort of a draw. This time Mark has a gut shot straight draw. Lloyd flops top pair. He's got the lead in the hand. And Lloyd is betting. 85. 85,000 is the bet by Lloyd. He's going to make it 85,000 to go. Back over to Mark, our one-time chip leader. Mark learned the game of poker from his good friend Phil Helmuth. He knows a thing or two about the game. And here we go, the turn. Let's go ahead and see the turn card, my friend. And the turn is a nine. First to act. 
Well, Mark pairs the nines, but not as good as Lloyd's tens. Both players now have a gut shot, except now Mark can't win with the eight. They'll just chop. The only thing that could make Mark a winner would be another nine on the river, and Lloyd ahead in the hand and betting every street. 85. Again, it's 85,000. This time, Mark is going to go all in. All in by Mark. 300, boy. 85. <clears throat> was the original wager. Lloyd has the best of it, but man, you can't feel too Mark. good about making this kind of call. How much more to me? Yeah, we're getting it's a two on that thread. Maybe a little bit more. <clears throat> Mark, the chip leader for a lot of this final table. Lost that to Daniel, and now Fred puts his tournament life in with just a 5% chance to win on the river. This might be the only way he can win this hand is by getting all the chips in the middle and getting Lloyd to fold. I can get you a quick. Recap Finally got me. <laughs> Did I get you? I, you tell me what you have. I'll tell you what to do. No, I'm not. I'm not going out. But oh. I think you want to be. Yeah, I think I do too. <clears throat> I want to re-raise you. I don't have any more chips. <laughs> I said I want to. <laughs> get out of here, Lloyd. <laughs> Well, friend, when does the friendly jibber-jabber back and forth turn into trying to get an angle on somebody? I don't think he's going to be that happy. No, Mark, I'm pretty sure he's not going to be very happy <laughs> seeing you only happy. had two outs going to the river. Welcome back to the HPT at Peppermill Casino Resort in Reno, Nevada. I'm Chris Hansen. By my side is Fred Bevel. Mark has recaptured the chip lead here at this final table, sitting on 28% of the chips in play, but right behind him is Joe Chrisman with 27% of the chips in play. The short stack is Eric Stokes. 20 and 40,000, 5K Annie here at our final table. Axon's gonna start on Joe Chrisman. A professional poker player from Pacifica, California, born in Seoul, Korea, only has $360 invested in this tournament. He's going to fold. Over to Lloyd. Ace Jack limps in. Mark decides he is taking this hand off versus Lloyd, as they've been butting heads much of this final table. Daniel's got 9-7 here. And now Daniel in the tank with 9-7. Finally decides to call the 20,000 from the small blind. And now to Eric. Seven deuce of hearts. He's all in. A call from Lloyd. A fold from Daniel. Well, Eric, I know you're getting short. I know that you were in the big blind. Makes the call. Lloyd. Flips over. But I don't know about seven deuce here for the big guy. I Obviously, he wasn't hoping for a call. I don't hate the play. I don't think he had enough chips behind him to make that play. And Lloyd is a tight player. Odds are if he's going to get in the middle, he's going to have a little bit of something. But Eric's got two live cards. Let's see what happens. Here we go. The flop is 9-10 king. Just one heart on that flop. Lloyd ahead with ace high. Also has a gut shot straight draw. Eric's still hoping to find a seven or a deuce. And the turn is a six. And now Eric picks up an eight as an out. So it's an eight, a seven, or deuce for Eric Stokes to stay alive at this final table. The river. It is an ace, and that's going to do it. Lloyd is going to eliminate Eric Stokes. Another player gives it a great try to become a two-time HPT champion. It wasn't meant to be here in Reno tonight. All right, guys, joined with Eric now. We Last time we were doing this, you won an HPT event. Now, today, you hung around, but it was really up and down. What do you think about your play? Um, I'm not upset with my play. Um, every time I seem to get a hand or whatever in position, I seem to get re-raised. So um, at the end of the day, I'm glad about my decisions. Obviously not the last one. Hey, it's nice having you back at the final table. And for your efforts, just over $10,000. So not a bad week for you here in Reno. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I had a good time. Daniel first acts. Suited connectors are folded. Joe Chrisman on the button. <laughs> We've seen a lot of action between Mark and Lloyd, and it looks like that trend is going to continue. Joe is going to fold. That's pretty, that's pretty Lloyd limps in. I would like Lloyd to play. And <laughs> it looks like it's queen <laughs> seven for Mark. Mark. Who's this Lloyd fella? I'm going to check out how he, he plays. plays. 
You're a true American Let's hero. Let's go ahead and see the flop. He is right about that. And here we go. The flop is ace, six, four. No help for either of these players. Damn Queen start. eight is the best hand right now. Lloyd checks. 55. 55,000 is the bet by Mark. Lloyd is going to check. Mark's going to fire 55,000. Lloyd looks down. It's, it's still queen eight. No, two black ones. <laughs> you can't tell me what you really have. You can lie about it. Yeah. That's what I said, two black okay. ones. Well, I hope it's a club and a spade, not two clubs. <laughs> And Lloyd. These two definitely going to be sending each other some Christmas cards this year. I maybe see a sitcom set in Southern California <laughs> with these two. Fred, we are almost done with Season 7, this being our last event. That means Season 8 is on the horizon. Go to hptpoker.com to find out about our upcoming events that anyone can play in and anyone, even you, can win. For James Larson and Fred Bevel, I am Chris Hansen. We'll see you next time right here on the HPT.